This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart moments. We are converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life. So after the conference, which was about finding the right partner for your path, midlifers, I don't know if they came to you, but they came to me and they were like, please do one for us. It seems like dating is different for midlifers than it is for the rest of us. I hope, I believe I'm not <laughs> in midlife yet. <laughs> yes, and the, 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 we are using midlife for broad reference. Uh -huh. Second timers. Oh, okay. We can use that term as well. Okay. People are coming from something. Let me let me say this. Yes. Um, I found that it's the feeling is very different for someone like me who was in marriage for just four years, vis-a-vis -vis someone who was in marriage for twenty years. You know those yes. people who divorced yes. after a long time. Yes. Uh huh. And I hope you know that when people tell you they were married for twenty years, does not mean they are even in their fifties. Nowadays, people are crazy enough to jump into things before they even have the brains for it. Yeah. So they can say 20 years and they're only 38. Yeah. Your age, mate. <laughs> <laughs> People can... Okay. So what we are saying here yeah. is, when you say midlife, don't just think 50s or 40s. Yes, they are part mm. of it. Mm. I just want you to think people are having to do it second, a second time. Okay. So when you're trying to marry a second time and you're trying to, to start this thing again, it's, it's, it can be very confusing because society does not understand you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many times after you, you go through what you went through, it changed your whole social life. Yes. Your friends changed. Yes. Your communities changed. Yes. The places you lived changed. Yes. Everything in your life shifted. Many times these people take long because they're trying to find their footing in the yeah. world. Yeah. To rebuild their career afresh, yeah. to rebuild their social life afresh. Maybe their career is still ongoing, but the people with whom they are doing life, mm -hmm. with whom they are thinking together, mm -hmm. and the, the emotional impact of whatever went on. Yeah. Many times, in fact, they remain in, in semi-hiding. They, 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 they just switch off some things. And, 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 and you know, when, when there's no rain, the frogs disappear. You wonder where they went to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, those yeah. creatures that love rain, when it rains, yeah. they come back. Yeah. People can also take a, take a time out emotionally, and they are there, they are here physically, they're doing other things. Mm. But they are not in that space. And they don't know how long they remain there. Mm -hmm. They don't know how long they hide. They mm -hmm. don't know how long they, 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 they even lose track of time. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're going to do, if you want to date again, mm -hmm. after the first time, yeah. to, for midlife, is to get rid of the emotional debris from what happened. The emotional mm -hmm. remains, the hung up from whatever hurt you. Nobody wanted, nobody marries for divorce. Mm. We, we end up in breakups and divorces because something went wrong. Yeah. Sober people don't do that. Mm -hmm. It found you. Yeah. <laughs> you survived it. And if you're not careful, you're going to remain just a survivor. Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of the debris? One, you stop being just a divorcee or a widower. Mm -hmm. You stop being that survivor of whatever happened. Yeah. You start, you, you, you offload the anger, the regret. Society is asking you, where are you going with all these children? Where are you going with all that? That person is still your wife. Oh, you still have that, the other one going on. Generally, society does not want you to renew and give yourself a chance for another life. Mm -hmm. They want to fix you in one place where they can, you're predictable. Mm -hmm. You start making moves they did not predict, they're very uncomfortable with them. Mm -hmm. Many people don't know how to mind their own business. Just because you are their daughter, their sister, their brother, they feel very entitled to suggest what you should do with your life. Yeah. And they just won't leave you alone. Mm -hmm. This is the point we, we, we must be defiant and rebellious a little bit mm -hmm. in a way that we can follow what we want. Mm -hmm. First of all, to determine you still deserve, deserve love. It's a very defiant decision. Mm -hmm. The term love and happiness does not matter to society. What they want is that you are married, you are having children. 
Yeah. They don't care that you're happy. Yeah. They don't ask, are you happy? How many people ask that? Only, only, only few, very few who care. Mm. To find a person who, when you're explaining, they just ask, how do you feel? Yeah. No, but that's what happens everywhere. But here yeah, you should stick there. There's nothing better. Stop being uh, hoping too much. There, you can't get that. Be realistic. Sit over there. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. So a person who is coming from anything, yeah. what they have heard is, are you sure, oh, it is shameful, oh, you're going to embarrass us. Mm -hmm. I think I want you about best couple, and sometimes you should get best not couple. Yeah. Just a man and a woman. Yes. No problem, best couple, but sometimes they, they have a conflict of interest in keeping you married, so their project does not fail. <laughs> Careful. Yeah. I've seen them confusing people because they become the de facto counselors, even when they're not trained counselors. Yeah. We start consulting them about issues they don't have the competency for. Yeah. It's a, we're just observing hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. And seniority. Mm. And, and just because they stood with you, you appreciate. We appreciate those people who stand with us during that time. Mm. But the imposing of our opinion on the decisions becomes very harmful. Mm. Because, yes, I helped you guys getting married and standing that, that, that ceremonial role mm -hmm. is meant as all parents, parent, parental figures. Yes. But how much do I know you personally? How, when you're evolving day by day, I don't have an idea. You're just calling me in when there's this crisis. Yeah. And I may listen, but I can't start telling you, oh, we all, all of us, all of us do this. All of us mm -hmm. go through it. Even us, no perfect, no perfect. And I'm returning you to a place of stress. Can I ask, are you happy? How do you feel? Yeah. Can I be real? I just want to know. I know you're not crazy. By the time it is getting here, my friend, you've gone through things. I don't want to subject you to other things. Yeah, yeah. What are you experiencing? Because this person can pretend for the few minutes I'm with you guys. Yeah, that's true. You're with the person, this person, day and night, 24-7. You see their true colors. They can hear talk. What do you want yourself? Yeah. I saw one guy begging for the wife to allow him to take clothes and leave because she's always cheating with somebody. Repeatedly now. What? And she just... <laughs> he, 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 luckily for him, he recorded. Brothers don't report the, the, the problems they go through. For him, he just recorded. That's how we, we learned it. Uh-huh. And he was recording because she's always changing stories. Oh. I'm recording because I, you can bring people here, cry, cause drama, say, I'm the one who's doing this to you, and they believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So when you're dealing with a gas later like that, can I come there as best couple and say, oh, just endure? Mm -mm. And, and thank God for phones nowadays, they can show us the, the, the reality. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. People can record the audio without, so that people can hear who you are calling an angel. Yeah. It's actually a demon in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. The things they say and the charmingness they show to the world mm. is very contradictory. Yeah. The first step to date when you're midlife is to process what went on so that it stops becoming your identity. Mm -hmm. Stops swallowing who you are. You stop calling yourself divorcee. A lady opened a cafe and called it, called it a battered wife cafe. People be refused to participate in that. Yeah. Because they're saying, what are you glorifying? I would grow it. So don't, you, don't call yourself battered, don't call yourself dropped, dumped. Oh, it was, oh, okay. She was doing it to sort of validate her Yes, experience. she was coming from a very uh, abusive marriage. And she, her idea was to show that she has survived. But she used the wrong language. Yeah, no one wants that. Yes. Yeah. We, we, so I want you to... Lily, you must never date when you still look divorced. Look? How? And you must never date when you still look widowed. What's the look? When it is still on you, you are still in crisis. Do you get it? No. When you still look like you have just been left, divorced, harassed by the process, court process, broke, confused, lost self esteem, just you are not in a good dating place. You're going to pick rescuers. You're going to pick people who just play on uh -huh. your situation. You, they don't even see you for who you are. They don't appreciate. They think they're doing you a favor. You're mm -hmm. going to end up in a worse marriage than what you're coming out of. Never get into anything else before you outgrow what you are in, so much that until you tell people, it's not obvious. Yeah. You should appear so happy that it's not obvious. Yeah. You can relax. I can see you are smiling. <laughs> yeah, I'm smiling because, um, <clears throat> so I dated someone after I got married. 
I mean, after I got divorced. Yeah. So I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and I was telling them, my ex. So they were like, ex, ex. I was like, no, I moved on. I have a new ex. <laughs> so so I was just, I keep finding that funny. Yes. Uh-huh. It's good that <coughs> when you are coming to the market, you are coming with a new identity. Yeah. Not because of what has just happened, I'm homeless. Because yeah. of what just happened, I can't pay my bills. Yeah. Because of what? No. If it takes you a while to work back to your financial fit, foot, yeah. if it takes you a while to climb out, yeah. take that while. Yeah. It's very tempting to, find, to look for company when you're lonely. It's tempting. The temptation is very high when, when, when you're in that void. And the uh, options are too many. I... Yes. Many people are knocking at your door. Yeah, even the wrong ones married. I mean, it was yes. chaos. When I think about it, I'm like, oh my God. It's chaotic. Yeah. Because they know it's like now you are, you are, you are low-hanging fruit. It was so bad, yeah. A low-hanging fruit. If you are not careful, you never discover hope. You never get back on your feet. Yeah. You become that, you know, the source of fling, flings, flings, yeah. flings, flings, flings. Yeah. And people think because now you don't have a woman... She can just come by, wash a few clothes, do this and the other, pretend like, and yeah. get whatever she wants. Yeah. The other person comes around, doing that, doing that. I was talking to young men about completing their house before they got married. And we said, if you have been so diligent as to, com to buy land, build a house in the city before you're married, congratulations. But just know that that is also a den of temptations. <laughs> completing that house when you don't have a wife yes. can make it that you're bringing different women. They're they even bringing themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you're promising, like you have money. Mm. You're organized. Mm. You have a life. Those who qualify and those who don't qualify will try their luck. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you add a small car there, you have Ooh. two private spaces now. You can just take a ride with this girl going home, then you pass by your place. Yeah. It, it can become a, a routine. It's so convenient. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Nobody is watching you. Nobody is and it's more, I think, um, a house that one built is more comfortable than a restaurant. Yes. No, that is your space. Yeah. You can even tell people where you are to come and see. Come and see. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? As they see, you also see other things. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was telling them, what, what you don't see, because you think you're not cheating on anyone, because you're not married, mm. because you're still single, mm. you think nobody um, is being hurt. Mm. You're cheating on your future. You're cheating on your future marriage. Yeah. If you're intending on getting married, remember neighbors can see what is happening. Mm. People are very curious more than you think. People are very curious. Mm. And when they realize that it's always a traffic of different women, then one day you want a serious woman to trust you and marry you. Yeah. Somebody will tell her. And when I say neighbors, don't just think busy people. Yeah. Think of the house help next door. Mm. Think of it. Mm. And they will pity this good, whether they pity or just they hate. <laughs> Whatever. Jealousy. Whatever it is. Yeah. They find a clean woman who's trying to marry this guy. And they're wondering now, this this fella. Yeah. Why is he deceiving this? You, the woman you want to convince will get wind of the life you lived. And I was telling them the highest cost is that you may need to move away from that house for you mm. to start afresh. Mm. Do not contaminate it with that behavior. You spoil your name in that surrounding so yeah. that you can't marry seriously in that surrounding. Yeah. You are... And if a person hears the same thing from three people, mm. if a reasonable man asks you, how are you, my daughter? Oh, so you are the one with that guy. All right. And I hope you know him, eh? <laughs> and the guy disappears. Yeah. The next mother tells you, eh, my daughter, are you now the one today? But, again, I, I think people don't tell you. People wait for you to get married, and then that's when they bring those stories. Only when you're also not approachable. When you're approachable, they'll tell you. Really? When they see you are sincere, and you open. Yes, they'll tell you. Sometimes it's not the immediate neighbor. It's just a person who knows that person. Okay? They may not be in that locality, but they just... Mm. You, you start telling us you're getting married, who you're getting married to. But the last time I checked, that guy was living a very careless lifestyle. Are you sure? You're talking about that house. How many people came there? Uh, mm -hmm. How many women did he bring there? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Are you aware of that lifestyle? If you're aware, it's okay. No, I didn't. I thought... <coughs> you know? Yeah. We're also saying sometimes they never get married. They just get reluctant and years go you lose mm. track of time it's very addictive mm. it's very addictive you can lose track of time yeah. when you have also come from another marriage and you have another middle life where you have a home a job 
that middle life can also become like the single people who have a house. Uh -huh. There is nobody you're offending directly. Yeah. You're grown up. Yeah. You, have a, you know you can be moving because of career. People can't really investigate you. Yeah. It takes more discipline yeah. to still marry right when you're in this middle space and you don't have somebody watching over you and asking questions. Yeah, true. The first step is to do therapy, do self-healing, do self-discovery, to discover who you are beyond the situation that has happened and, and make sure there is no identity that is coming from that situation. It's just a history, it's not identity. Okay? I have a burning question. Yes. Uh, there are these situations where there is co-parenting and so the mother of the children has been left in the matrimonial home and the father moved out so that the living in that matrimonial home becomes a sort of a tethering of sorts like you know we're not married but we are not completely separated no never been limbo divorce officially get your freedom back we are not together we are not together co-parenting does is not affected by divorce okay never allowed to be put on pending hanging in between you're being deceived your years are going when the year goes it has gone so let's say this this home I live in, it's not officially in paper. On paper, it's not mine. So there's that mix-up. Divorce will separate everything. Divorce has three cases. Mm -hmm. The marriage itself, properties, and children. All right. So it will always separate who's... So that one will be given to someone. Once it's allocated to you, sometimes on trust for children. Uh-huh. Wh wherever, there will be closure. <laughs> so don't, don't stay in a place that has no closure. Yeah. So that you have your freedom... You know that freedom is not just for dating, it's also for just being free to meet new people, live new life, go to places. Yeah, yeah. However young children are, you can always organize your life. Okay. Remember your life and that of children is evolving parallel. Don't stop yours because of theirs. You're not even doing them a favor. You're not showing them how to multitask and arrange life. Mm. Be there for them. You're not abandoning, but do not stop your life until you start blaming them. You know those mothers who, are, yeah. who, who, who blame us? Yeah. For not having a life? Exactly. It's because of you. Yeah. No, don't sacrifice your life. Mm. You live and become resentful to the children. Yes, and the children will in turn become resentful. Yes, yeah. because they feel guilt-tripped for yeah. things they have no clue about. Yeah. The second thing is to date only eligible single people. There are many people who are coming from breakups, divorces, who are not eligible for marriage. When you look at their history, you can see they are serial failures. They, are, they can't commit. They have no consistency. A lot of people married on credit. Mm -hmm. Somebody married hoping on their potential. Yeah. Somebody married of, of, of how they were packaged, mm -hmm. you know? These are single people, he's going to church, going mm -hmm. to church, he has a career. Yeah. That is very appealing. Mm -hmm. Yet this person has a lot of mistrust issues. Yeah. Inconsistency issues, lying, dishonesty. Mm. So somewhere along the, 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 the midlife, the guy who had Better on this woman gets tired, leaves. You, yeah. you meet the woman and you think, oh, she's also coming from something like me. Oh, both of us have had a history. Yeah. Oh, you are hurt by the sort of us. Oh, I understand that. Not every person is single, midlife is marriageable. Yeah. Although they talk like they're the victim, many times they are the villain. <laughs> yes. Everybody wants to talk like they were the, the offended ones. True. Many times they were the offenders. True. Keep this in mind. Many single people you're going to meet and have a lot of chemistry mm -hmm. because you are you're lonely, you are longing for connection, mm. you're hungry for emotional validation. Mm. Sometimes you're crushing on people because of your needs. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Not because of them. Yeah. You hope so much to find a person when you find one, you over hope. Mm. And your feelings assist you. Yes. Remember some people are not marriageable. And people had married them, realized it was a mistake, and corrected them. Don't pick up the mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It was a mistake to marry this person from the beginning. Mm. They are toxic. They are inconsistent. Mm. They don't know how to be reliable. Mm. And when you meet them because you think you can convert people, you pick up from there, mm. you get tired down the line. Yeah. This is my, my observation. A lot of time, because single people... Midlife, you're also busy with your career, you're busy with raising this family, you're busy. With, you're busy. Yeah. So you don't tend to meet a lot of single people. Mm -hmm. Basically because you never go out of your routine. Mm -hmm. 
me basically because you never search proactively. Yeah. But because you live a bottled life, you, you begin to believe single people midlife are so rare to find. When you meet one, you confine yourself there and you begin to believe they are also good. And that they were also the victim in the past relationship. Of course. You never think about that they could have been the villain. Yes. And you never think about what if they have not evolved like I have done. Yeah. What if they have, done, they have not done the work. Yeah. Some people, because they were at a delicate place, they gave themselves five years yeah. to raise children. Hey, I'll do this and mm. get out of the vic. Mm. So by the time they got out there, they don't realize these five years was life-changing. Mm. That you changed into a more awakened, balanced person. Yeah. So you don't begin to look for awakened, balanced people. Mm. Mm. You're just saying them too. They were left them too. It happened to them too. For me, it was this way for me. So you're connecting around that. So you tend to be very understanding. Yeah. The moment you meet a comrade, yes. you, you, you seem like a fellowship of suffering. Yes. We have come from the same suffering. Yes. You seem like you understand each other more. Yes. Just remember, many people were the cause of the divorce. They were not the victim. Mm. And they will not tell you that. Mm. Many people are still, others were good people prior, but the experience has made them bitter, mm. unaware, uh, too trusting, too clingy, too needy, too unhealed, too bleeding. Mm. Just remember this messy experience of coming out of something. Yeah. Especially if you don't see any intentional journey of healing prior to this. Yeah. Yeah. That alone is a litmus test that will eliminate many people. Yes. Just get to know what have you done to heal, to deal with what happened. Yeah. No. Somebody can just say, oh no, time heals everything. No. <laughs> what is the practical thing they've done? Mm -hmm. The last thing I want you to do when you reach midlife is to update yourself on the current social structure. From the last time you are here, things have changed. From the last time you are here, communication has moved forward. Yeah. Social gatherings have shifted. Mm -hmm. How people meet new people. If you try to apply that old method, you're going to be shocked. Because society keeps drifting and shifting. Mm -hmm. That time you might have d dated analog. Now you need to date virtually. You need to meet people yeah. in online spaces. Yes. The last time you did not have to worry too much about other things. Uh -huh. if, there was, if they were not cheating with a person, that uh -huh. was safe. Today people can cheat with other people of their own sex. Can cheat with gadgets. <laughs> Today, <laughs> the, the perversion has gone beyond. Watch I cry. <laughs> it's no longer just best friends. You can't just say this. Before. Sometimes when your gut is troubling you, look closer. Yeah. We have another dynamic since while you were away, it has come up. So I want you to update yourself consciously mm. just by the love books currently, dating books currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just listen to podcasts that discuss uh, the current dating scene. The, in that third uh, point of updating yourself, it will also help you know where people of your age group are hanging out and how to mm -hmm. connect to them mm -hmm. and where they are clustering around. Yeah. People always cluster around similar interests. Mm -hmm. People always connect around what, what is driving them in that day. Mm -hmm. You need to know about the zeitgeist, the spirit of that age. Mm -hmm. What is the nuance in their communication? Somebody can say something in, in, in a cultural context that you, you miss it. Mm. Somebody can express an opinion that is very... It cuts across their character. But he expressed it in the current dialogue. Mm -hmm. They just supported a side yeah. in a debate. Yeah. Tells you something. Yeah. So I want you to update yourself and don't say you're going to do the way you used to do. You may not write letters anymore. You may not have uh, that technological stage of that time. Mm -hmm. Today we want, today people are more instant, more direct. Mm -hmm. You can actually get to check a lot of more people. So the third point is to say, bring yourself to speed with the current trend of technology and get to know where the social groupings have gone and where to meet more of these kind of people. Because we said, when you allow yourself to be just be routine, routine, you're going to be bottled. Yes. All right. Um, I have so many questions. Maybe we should do a part two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but let me go to the book because our time is up. Please get yourself a copy of this book if you're thinking about getting married. If you're thinking about dating, please read this book. 
um, dating right. And all the books can be found on www.benjaminzuluglobal.com. You can also book, uh, make an order through the WhatsApp number on your screen. And see you on the next episode. Bye. This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart matters. We are converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, 